Very few people come in this world who change the course of history. Our today's topic is about one of those men who changed the world that we live in. Dr. Brzezinski has been one of the chief protagonists of the contemporary international political order. In this series, let's take a look at the life and works of the one and only Professor Dr. Zbigniew Kazmierz Brzezinski, a man who was going to change the world. Zbigniew Kazmierz was born in Matsuwaki, Warsaw on March the 28th, 1928. His father was a diplomat from Poland to Soviet Ukraine and his accounts were the first set of molding about the union of socialist Soviet republics that Mr. Zbigniew's mind got when he was just nine years old. In the 1930s, Tedjus Brzezinski took the family along to France and then to Germany during the rise of Hitler. At that time, the Western intellectuals viewed the USSR in hindsight of Joseph Stalin's philosophy. The story of the Polish-born Canadian who became an American citizen at the age of 30 is one of wonder and amazement. Zbigniew came to New York in 1938 when his father became the Polish Consul General in Canada. And in 1939, much to his disappointment, Warsaw was attacked by the Nazis and Stalin had also sent troops of his Red Army to fight. Zbigniew Brzezinski came from a family of Polish aristocrats with a deep interest for international relations right from his childhood. He carefully followed all the developments of the war and that is where his hatred for the Soviet Union initiated. In a fit of fury against Franklin D. Roosevelt, he once nailed a map of Poland to Winston Churchill to convey him the message that the eastern borders of Poland needed to stay intact. Most probably that map never reached Churchill. But then he declared that an iron curtain had descended across the middle of Europe. When ZKB started his studies at McGill University, he quickly established a reputation for himself as an expert on Soviet affairs. At that time, he told his father that now it was his life's ambition to liberate Poland from the Soviet occupation. His MA thesis at McGill University was one of his first masterpieces on Soviet Russia, where he claimed that the Soviet Union was a loosely knit union of nations that resented each other. Based on his academic credentials, he got into Harvard when he was just 22 years old. Harvard University was the leading Cold War university in the years leading up to 1965, and Brzezinski was offered only a conditional scholarship based on if he was good at his studies in the newly found Russian Research Center. He was so ambitious for that opportunity that he accepted the offer with just $250 in his pocket and left for Massachusetts. Can you guess who taught Brzezinski's first class there? The person who went on to become the undisputed architect of the new world order, Professor Dr. Henry Alfred Kissinger. What an extraordinary series of events it was that after his political science doctorate, Dr. Brzezinski was appointed as an instructor at Harvard and he and Dr. Kissinger were among the candidates for a faculty position. But when Mr. Kissinger won an associate professorship in 1959, Brzezinski decamped to Columbia University. Just imagine his vision about the Soviet Union at age 22, when most young people are indulged in frivolous activities. He said, and we quote, already at McGill, I reached the conclusion that the weakness of the Soviet Union, its Achilles heel, was its multinational character. Once I grasped that in my MA thesis at McGill, I began to work on formulating a strategy which in a piecemeal fashion would expose the weaknesses of the Soviet system, detach the countries of the Soviet bloc from the Soviet Union, after detaching them, transform them, or maybe combine the two processes and then eventually accomplish the dismantling of the Soviet Union itself. Sounds right out of a movie about some evil genius forming some Machiavellian plan against some grand entity. Does it not? Well, it sort of actually is. Brzezinski's loathe for the Soviet state started very early in his life when his homeland was occupied with them. Brzezinski was not innately a bad person. He advocated the narrowing of the yawning income gap between the wealthy countries and the rest, a restructuring of the entire financial system so that it no longer benefited only the greedy Wall Street speculators, 
and a meaningful response to climate change. It seems as if he was born to bring about the demise of the Soviet Russia, considering the fact that it was right at that time when he was studying that there was an entire new field of study formed by the name of Sovietology. He married Emile Benz in 1955 when he was working on the thought and concept of totalitarianism, during which he claimed, controversially though of course, the Soviet Union and the Nazi system to be similar. Although both the systems were totalitarian and had similarities, but most probably Bazinski was a bit blinded by what happened in Warsaw in 1939 to render both the systems similar. Bazinski, despite primarily being an academic, told his friends that he had no intention of becoming absent-minded, pipe-smoking Mr. Chips and that he enjoyed the fact that his teaching work was dedicated to shape the US Cold War policy. A very interesting incident took place in 1953. Bazinski went to meet the Radio Free Europe head Jan Novak Chizurensky without any appointment. Jan was a prominent wartime resistance leader and he was very surprised by the unannounced visit of the stranger. But upon meeting Bazinski, he was very impressed with his knowledge about the Polish underground resistance. It was at that time that the RFE leader knew that Bazinski was one day going to play a vital role in the liberation of Poland from the Soviet Union. After the US inaction in Hungary of 1956, Bazinski toned down his approach against the Soviet Union to a policy of peaceful engagement. Through this strategy, he had planned to lure in the long run the populations of the countries entrenched by the Iron Curtain towards the West. Did you know that Zbigniew Bazinski advised a senator who was later going to become the most beloved US president ever? Yes, you're right, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Bazinski even wrote speeches for him and the JFK himself employed him for that. When in Columbia University, Bazinski became close to the elites of politics and foreign policy think tanks, while at the same time writing for the Foreign Affairs magazine. 